If you're building AI agents, understanding what tokens are and how they work is the absolute key to controlling your costs and being able to scale effectively. In this video, we're going to explain what they are, how they're used to determine your costs, and how you can optimize. My name is Daniel. I'm the head of growth at VoiceFlow, and let's dive in. Now, tokens are the way that AI models like GPT or Claude price their costs. A token's about four characters, or you can think about it like the part of a word. But what's more important is actually how they're used in costs. Most people think it's what's coming out of the AI model is what's charged, like the response you get from GPT or Claude or any of these other models. But it's not entirely true. What goes into the prompt or into the model to generate that output is actually just as important, if not even more important. So if we hop into OpenAI pricing here, you'll notice that there's two types of costs. So there's the input cost, which is the amount for the input tokens, and then the output cost, which is the amount for the output tokens. Now, it's a combination of both of these that actually determine how much you're going to pay. And often what's happening is that the input is actually where all of your tokens are being used. So your output may be 200 or 300 tokens, which is actually pretty sizable. But your input might be thousands, and you don't even know what's going in there. And so it's important to understand what's going on so you can start to optimize and figure out what's the best balance between your input and output to make sure that you can get the best bang for your buck and you can generate a response for your user effectively from the data that you have. So if I hop over here to a quick document to help break this down, this is what it looks like when you're actually sending something to an AI model. Your input is a combination of your question, the context, and your prompt, and any other information you're sending in, and your output is a response that the AI model gives you. Now, we're gonna go ahead and look at these two different examples inside of VoiceFlow to give you a real sense of how tokens are being calculated. So here we are in VoiceFlow, and if you haven't used it, VoiceFlow is a tool to be able to build AI assistants, letting you use any of the different models that are available, allowing you to switch between them without needing to think about different API keys and costs. And so if I go ahead and drag out the AI step in VoiceFlow and connect it up, what you'll notice is that I have the prompt settings here. Now in my prompt settings, I can use any of these different models interchangeably within my assistant. Now, the way that this works is you'll notice that each of these models actually has a different cost. So if I look at the Claude Anthropic pricing, you'll see that there's different costs for the different models and the same thing with OpenAI. And so how tokens work in VoiceFlow from a cost perspective is that VoiceFlow offers a kind of set set of number of tokens. So you can pay $5 for a million tokens. Now, the different models have different costs. And so you can see that the more expensive models have a multiplier beside them that basically just multiplies the amount of tokens that the cost or they use and applies it against your balance in VoiceFlow. So this lets you use different models for different scenarios, depending on what you need. So for this example, it's a very simple one. So I'm just going to use ChatGPT or GPT 3.5. But if I wanted something that was a bit more robust, and we'll show this later, I might want to use GPT 4 Turbo. So let's go with ChatGPT. And we're going to start with a simple example here of just greet the user. And in my system prompt, I'm going to say you are a support rep for VoiceFlow. Now, if I go ahead and actually run a test here, it's going to show me the breakdown of the tokens that I've used. So you can see here, model is GPT 3.5 Turbo, and my token consumption, my total is 40, so 40 tokens were used. And you'll see that query is input, so these are my input tokens is 26, and my output tokens is 16. Now, because I'm using GPT 3.5, which is a cheaper model, there's a 0.75 multiplier on it, which means that the actual token applied against my voice flow balance is 30, so it's even less. Now, this makes sense, super simple. Now the input is actually just my prompt, so greet the user, and then my instruction, so your support rep for voice flow. So keeps it really simple, really clean, not too hard to understand. Now it gets a bit more tricky when you go into more advanced examples like using a knowledge base. So if you've used any AI builder, you'll notice that there's a feature that lets you upload documents and then ask a question. This is called retrieval, and you can learn more about it up here. I recently did a deep dive video explaining everything about how it works, but in VoiceFlow, we refer to it as our knowledge base. So over here in my VoiceFlow knowledge base, I've uploaded a document that we're going to ask it some questions about. So back on my canvas here, I'm going to keep building this out. So what I'll do is I'll add a capture step to capture the user's question, and then another response AI step on this side. But this time, I'm going to pick the knowledge base as my data source. Now, in here, we're going to enter the question that the user asked. So that's in this last utterance variable. So last utterance. And for the prompt settings, there are global prompt settings in the knowledge base. So let's just go ahead and use those. So you can see that I've got all the models here. So let's just use GP 3.5. And we're going to say again, you are a support. Great. 
So let's go ahead and save this. And you'll notice here that there's a couple things. One is a chunk limit. So how retrieval works is it actually takes sections from the documents that you've uploaded and it inject injects them into the prompt. So right away, you know that the actual amount of tokens that's being used is going to be much higher than they were in our previous example, because now we've got the question, we've got the prompt, and we've actually got the information being passed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to ask it a question like, how do I optimize my knowledge base? Right. And so you can see here that right off the bat, I've used way more tokens than I did in my previous example. So in this case, the amount of tokens I've used is 1,916. And you can see that most of those are actually in the query. So this is what I was talking about before, where even though my answer doesn't look that big, I've actually used many more tokens than I did in my initial example, where I was just using the general AI. Now, because of this, if you think back to that diagram, we got our question, we got our prompt, and then the context is really where most of the tokens are being used. And so this is information that's being passed from your AI or your documents. And now the other thing here is it's kind of, it feels a bit outsized, right? Like I'm using a lot of tokens in my input, but my answer is quite small. So this is where you can start to get into optimizing how to get the best bang for your buck. Now to control the input, what you want to do is this is where you go to the knowledge base. And this is just using a classic vector database, like any other retrieval. We can go ahead and actually modify the chunk limit. So now let's say if I use a chunk limit of one. And so this means that one piece of like one chunk of text is going to be passed from the document to our AI model. And I come back here and I do the same thing. You're going to see that the amount of tokens is actually quite different. So now the total is 934. So you'll notice before it was 1,900. So we basically dropped about 1,000 tokens off of our question here. Now, there is a trade-off here because the lower your chunks, the less documents are being passed to the AI. So the less accurate your answer will be. The higher the chunks, the more documents, the more accurate, but the more tokens. So we want to do a couple of things here. Like the first thing we want to do is let's go back up to two or three. We want to, we want to make sure this is an accurate response. And we're going to go ahead and actually tell the AI to make the response longer. So to do that, I've got another sample knowledge base step over here that I've improved on. And so what I've done is I've added some instructions here. So I said, hey, format your responses in Markdown, include a title and subtitle, don't use bullet points. I've chosen to override the prompt settings. And so now what I want to do is instead of using GPT 3.5, I want to use GPT 4 Turbo. And the reason for this is that this is now a support use case, right? So if, if someone's actually messaging uh, into our support, having to talk to a human is going to cost the business money. And so instead, if we use a higher model here, the, the answer is going to be more accurate and it's more likely to solve the question. And it's only going to cost a couple cents versus dollars if they're actually talking to someone. And so that's where you can start to think about which models you use at different points in your conversation that have the best cost. So let's go ahead and connect up my improved prompt here. And you'll also notice that I cranked up the max response token. So you can go up to 2000, which is like pages and pages. It won't use all of that, but it's basically saying you have a high limit. So now when I go ahead and ask it the same question of how can I optimize my knowledge base? Let's go ahead and see what it puts out. Okay, so you can see here, I've got a much better answer for our user. So if I'm someone who's looking at this for support, this is actually probably going to answer my question much better than our previous responses were. It's all marked tagged in Markdown, which makes it easy to read. And then if I look at the amount of tokens I've used, so now I've used kind of the same amount of tokens we did the first time, right? So 2000 tokens, and the answer is uh, much larger now at about 118. Obviously, I'm using GPT-4. So with the multiplier of 12x, that becomes quite a few tokens that are applied to my voice load balance. But at the same time, when you actually look at the costs, this is a couple of cents. And so for a user looking at this, this is a very high quality answer. All right. And so I've done two things is I've increased the response. I've added more input around like the types of responses that I want with the assistant. And I've increased the number of chunks that I have. And so, and I've also changed the model to be more accurate. Now, this answer is probably going to satisfy a user. So they won't need to go out and talk to support or talk to a human. So while it costs a couple cents, it's going to save the business a couple of dollars. And so. That's kind of how you look to, to optimize and, and balance between them. So play around with those. Feel free to make sure you turn on debug mode, which is here. And this shows you what the input and output tokens are. But once you've got a good handle on it, this is how you can start to play around with optimizing tokens within your AI assistant. So you can optimize the input, which is like the prompt, the question, and then the context. You can also choose to optimize the model that you're using at the different point of the conversation.
So that's it for this video. One of the things I'll note is that we're always adding new models as they come out to VoiceFlow, and we're also always changing up the token pricing to make sure that it's the best it can be for users and it's reflected with the accurate token cost of today. If you enjoyed this series, check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel, and as always, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions about using VoiceFlow or you want to learn more, hop into our Discord. Uh, we've got a community that's thousands strong uh, that's able to build all different cases of AI assistance. Again, my name is Daniel. I'm the head of growth at VoiceFlow, and I'm looking forward to seeing you more.